unlikely things to hear on a history documentary. The Russians had Lemsip. The Americans had Night Nurse. This was the Cold War. <laughs> It was in this humble florist that the War of the Roses began. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Fawkes' bid to blow up the Houses of Parliament failed when he realised his body was made of jumpers and his head was an old football. <laughs> Tonight on Bruce Forsyth's History of Britain, Bo de Seer, de Seer Bo! <laughs> Horatio Nelson, one arm, one eye. A tragic example of what can happen if you fall asleep and someone finds your organ donor card. <laughs> Welcome to Biggest Historical Boobs with me, Katie Price. <laughs> Tonight, I intend to find out exactly what did happen to Hitler's other ball. And my search <laughs> begins right here. <laughs> in the Albert Hall. <laughs> <clears throat> and on Time Team tonight, we're in Stratford on Avon, where we've uncovered loads of monkey skeletons and some typewriters. <laughs> <laughs> when Hitler started writing Mein Kampf, he intended it to be a light-hearted romp called Carry On Kampfing. <laughs> John F. Kennedy, Indira Gandhi, John Lennon, if history teaches us anything, it's that if you don't want your child assassinated, don't name them after an airport. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm not interested in all this old nonsense, really, but um, <laughs> since the end of Blackadder, the work's been fairly hard to come by. <laughs> Hard to believe that this crumbling old ruin presented weakest link for as long as she did. <laughs> of course, the Bronze Age was the third best age in history. <laughs> and now the documentary that every Channel 5 commissioner has dreamt of. Did Hitler sink the Titanic? <laughs> We've been digging in this field in Hampshire for three weeks and we've found this one piece of crockery which tells us we desperately need to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear over a tannoy. We apologise to customers who have recently alighted at Northampton. I opened the wrong doors. <laughs> All the people shopping here at Hasda, please accept that you are piss poor. <laughs> <laughs> Clean up required in the magazine aisle between <laughs> loaded and nuts. <laughs> Would the parents of the lost child please pick him up from the meeting point? Madonna is trying to buy him. <laughs> I'd like to remind customers that our special offer this week is 100% off German bean sprouts. <laughs> if you would like to upgrade to first class, then you should have worked harder at school and got a better job. <laughs> Could the small boy holding the owl stop running at the wall between platforms 9 and 10? <laughs> Will the man on pump number four please remove the nozzle from the backside of the man on pump number six? <laughs> Could the owner of the Ford Fiesta 1100 in the car park with the tinted windows and the go faster stripes sort your life out, mate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't remember what the code is. Uh, uh, what, what, um, would, would Mr. Fire please report... <laughs> please report to the kitchen. That's Mr. Out of Control Fire. <laughs> please report to the kitchen before it's too late. I don't want to start a panic. <laughs> the 
train now approaching platforms three, four and five is the derailed <laughs> train from Swansea. <laughs> Would the owners of a black Jaguar please move it as it's attacking the customers? <laughs> this is your captain speaking. You can now turn on your mobile phones as you'll need to text your loved ones goodbye <laughs> as we plummet into the sea. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear at a school assembly. OK, today we're going to have a special outing. So, Miss Williams, if you'd like to tell everybody why you're a lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome a new member of staff today. He has no arms and no legs and no body, and we will call him the head. <laughs> <laughs> Would whoever's milkshake is bringing all the boys to the yard please stop it? <laughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting, boys and girls. I've just had a shit the size of a baby seal. <laughs> if you are found in possession of cocaine, you will be given a hundred lines. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and today in the after-school club, uh, we're going to be using paper mache to make a mother that actually loves you enough to pick you up at three o'clock. <laughs> I'm delighted to say that during the summer holidays, Mr. Wang married Miss Kerr. <laughs> <laughs> His nickname will remain the same. <laughs> a wise man once said, boys and girls, that if you try your hardest, you can fulfil your dreams. Generally, that's true. Not for you, though, Tom. You can't read. So... <laughs> And today, everyone, we have a new boy. Now, for some reason, whatever reason, he's been to a lot of schools. So be kind to him. Will you please make your way to the front, Richard Poo Willy? <laughs> <laughs> a word about registers. Uh, most of the staff are on one. <laughs> so that is how you put on a condom. <laughs> But, sir, shouldn't you have used a cucumber? <laughs> Not with that E. coli kicking around. <laughs> sorry, sorry I'm late. I just had a bit of a run-in with an interactive whiteboard. <laughs> it told me to fuck off. <laughs> I've had all your mums. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the next topic is on lighter things to hear on a TV talent show. Tonight, I'm going to be climbing a sip ladder. <laughs> You're right. I can't sing. Thanks. <laughs> I'd like to dedicate this song to a friend of mine who was run over last week and is in hospital. The wheels of the bus go round and round and round. And round. <laughs> I've got an ability that no one on this planet has. That's Ant, that's Deck. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Elvis was in the building. You're fat and there's a stench of death. <laughs> It's not what everyone would call entertainment, but you are one hell of an assassin. <laughs> I thought you hit the high notes really, really well. It'll be interesting to see if you can still do that when I haven't got your nuts in a clamp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my double act partner? Oh, he's he's in here. <laughs> Feeling. <laughs> Nothing more than <laughs> feeling <laughs> Crying to fall <laughs> When you said you were going to ride a donkey? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I have been on the show before. I was once trapped in somebody else's underpants going, feeling... <laughs> <laughs> 
that was an exceptional performance. And the way that you have overcome your blindness is truly inspirational. But this is a chip shop, the X Factor audition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I think you're all terrible, OK? All of you, you're completely dreadful. I don't know what you're doing. Especially you, Hasselhoff. What have you done since me, watch? <laughs> And as well as that, I can unzip the top of my head. It's where I keep my pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> I know you said you're a Gary Glitter tribute act, but we weren't expecting you to do that. Unlikely questions from this year's exams. <laughs> Discuss the metaphysical meaning of the following poem. My friend Billy has a ten-foot willy. <laughs> Would you like this exam to be A, multiple choice, or not? <laughs> the Bronte sisters. Shag, marry, push off a cliff. <laughs> Discuss the following. The Nazis got all their ideas from the History Channel. in the A-team who would not go on the aeroplane? Was it A, B or B, A? <laughs> <laughs> if a bank loses £60 billion in a six-month period, using numbers that you've plucked out of thin air, <laughs> work out what the chief executive's bonus will be. <laughs> Napoleon, a small man or a long way away? <laughs> Quantify n in terms of q when q is a positive integer that dissects a parabolic curve. How's your lucky pencil case now? <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of that round thing that they throw in the Olympics? Discuss. <laughs> Draw a diagram of the genitalia of the male elephant. Use all 30 sheets of paper <laughs> provided. <laughs> Biology. Without singing, what is the knee bone connected to? <laughs> Explain the use of juxtaposition in Macbeth. Alternatively, write down everything you know about Macbeth in a blind panic, cos you've got no idea what the word juxtaposition is. <laughs> Drama. Question one. What was it that first made you want to become a waiter? <laughs> what is your pin number? <laughs> the next topic is... On likely things for a continuity announcer to say. And now, to upset children everywhere, it's Peppa Pig. In pepper sauce. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, God. And Nigella will be back at the same time next week. <laughs> Up next, Ryan Giggs appears on Footballers' Wives. <laughs> next up on Channel 4, live from Switzerland, it's Come Die With Me. <laughs> And now for a special episode of Planet Earth, where six chimpanzees will watch David Attenborough have sex. <laughs> <laughs> and now is the time I have to be extremely careful, cos the next programme is about Roald Dahl, genius behind Willy Wanker's truck bollocks. <laughs> next on the History Channel, World War II in colour. Look away if you don't want to know how it ends. <laughs> Just to clear up some confusion for our regular viewers, ITV2 plus one is not the same as ITV3. <laughs> First, though, there's a serial killer on the loose in Balamori. <laughs> If you have been affected by some of the issues in EastEnders, 
they must have been acting it better than they usually do. <laughs> And now, Gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmares for the hard of hearing. <laughs> You're watching the Dignitas channel. For God's sake, don't press the red button. <laughs> Next up, it's Bargain Hunt, which is also rhyming slang for the bloke who presents it. <laughs> Right now, Kate Humble's in the lambing shed. Oh. <laughs> Unlikely lines from children's books. Yes, it is sad. I used to be on Top Gear, said, <laughs> said Stick of the Dump. <laughs> Jack, do you, uh, do you have any more of those beans? A string fellow? What's a string fellow? A string fellow? Why didn't you know it has tanned leather skin and a massive libido and bad 80s hair and a grin like a pedo? <laughs> this little piggy went to market, and this little piggy stayed at home, and this little piggy went <coughs> <coughs> and died horribly of swine flu. <laughs> <laughs> Let's learn the alphabet. A is for adopted, like you. <laughs> B is for... Basmati. <laughs> <laughs> and as Eeyore put the noose around his neck. <laughs> no, I... I don't think you should shave, Bilbo, said Frodo. <laughs> Those feet need waxing. <laughs> yes, yes, Grandma. What a big TV screen you got. <laughs> said Little Red Riding Hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Who's been sleeping in my bed? said Daddy Bear. Well, said Mummy Bear. It's been your brother, Ryan, and he's a much better shag than you are. I want to go to Tottenham, said Max. That's where the wild things are. <laughs> the lion, the witch and the wardrobe, or as we like to call them, the sugar babes. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a handsome young prince named Dara. <laughs> Where's Gaddafi? <laughs> the railway children gesticulated wildly at the driver. You've left us behind, you wanker! <laughs> Oh, dear, said Postman Pat. I've just had sex with my cat, Jess. <laughs> I should have gone to Specsavers. <laughs> and so Emily learned. If she'd just been a nicer little girl, Mummy and Daddy would never have got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, said the very hungry caterpillar? This gastric band has changed my life. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Mm. Unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. And there is just yet another Grand Slam victory for Andy Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and now we come to the javelin. If you're watching in 3D, you might want to look away now. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are at the uh, women's football, uh, but while you're enjoying the game, please spare a thought for the men at home who are going without dinner this evening. <laughs> Well, he's stroked that through the covers. Surely it would have been easier just to pull back the duvet. <laughs> <laughs> and here at the British Grand Prix, we've already had a couple of fatalities. Yes, two of the crowd have died of boredom. 
<laughs> Lewis Hamilton is three seconds ahead, but there's trouble at turn 17 as Dastardly and Muttley have dug a pit. <laughs> I'm here at the Green Court Bowls, and I've started cutting myself. <laughs> he's got the right hook in, he's got the left hook in, and he's finally finished putting up those curtains. <laughs> well, welcome back after the break. You haven't missed much, just the entire Indian innings. <laughs> Now, let's go back to Henley, where Claire Balding is standing with two cocks. <laughs> There's Rio Ferdinand! What a tackle! But uh, enough from me. I really should let these lads continue getting changed. <laughs> Alex Ferguson has substituted Wayne Rooney. Of course, not the first time Rooney has been pulled off by a 69-year-old. <laughs> Well, what a result. The UK Somalian has beat America's Kenyan to show that the Africans aren't going to have it all their own way. <laughs> Thanks for all those fantastic statistics there, Motti. Now go and get a fucking life. <laughs> Unlikely agony aunt letters. Dear Deirdre, I have recently become obsessed with a woman and begun stalking her. Look out of the window. <laughs> My partner won't give me oral sex, which is really annoying, because that's the only reason I formed the coalition with him in the first <laughs> place. <laughs> My wife says I, I don't feel anything, uh, which is a problem, and there was something else. Oh, yes, I'm on fire. <laughs> I'm 26, my girlfriend's 36. Is 10 years too big an age gap? Cos her daughter's 16, she's a right little soul. <laughs> I have recently met a woman who makes me feel young again. She's 167. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I'm from Nigeria, and I'm fed up of Mickey Flanagan mocking my accent. <laughs> Auntie, I'm a very, very nervous person, and sudden noises really startle me. In fact, even if I hear a buzzer or a bit of wee comes out. Ah. <laughs> 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 My mates are all getting into drugs, but I don't know what to do. Should I charge the mates' rates or just normal prices? <laughs> Dear Deirdre, I am a control freak. What should I do? I'll tell you what I should do. <laughs> I am 96, but I'm convinced that young women fancy me. Do I have penile dementia? <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to come and see you for a long time, but I can't get out. I am a man trapped inside the body of a woman. Could you tell us, please, how to get out of position 43 of the Kama Sutra? <laughs> I work in the public sector and I'm really, really, really worried about my pension. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear at Wimbledon. <laughs> well, at two sets down, let's see what he's got in his locker. He's not going to be there for about 20 minutes. I've got a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Serena Williams has been seeded. You've got to admire the bravery of that bloke. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sue Barker. You may remember my father, Chew Barker. <laughs> Ah. 
Well, they say that the All England Club is a bit behind the times, and that's why this small boy has just had his hand chopped off for stealing a strawberry. <laughs> I am a tennis umpire and gay, and it wasn't easy to come out. <laughs> <laughs> what a fantastic slice, but I do think the All England Club will insist she wears knickers again next year. How did the umpire get up there? I think he must have used the set bladder. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this year the British players play a lot better. If we look at this graph, we see huge biceps and an angry. Sorry, Steffi, wrong graph. <laughs> <laughs> and for any of our Scottish viewers, what you can see there in that glass of Pims is fruit. <laughs> Andy Murray here, and Andy Murray not being able to make it here today, but we do have his cab driver on the other line. Can you tell us what's occurred? <laughs> I can't get out of the cab! 